Hello today. Good morning from where you are, or maybe good night, maybe good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my session about dealing with different roles in Azure Sentinel Analytics. My name is Erwin de Kruik and I'm working as a lead data and AI for Inspark, a Microsoft partner in the Netherlands. And I'm also a data platform MVP. As in Spark, we help organizations to accelerate their digital transformations with impactful Microsoft solutions and expertise. So we are a Microsoft cloud only company. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, roles in Azure Science Analytics, of course. And this was a picture, I think, three days before we went in the lockdown in the Netherlands two years ago uh, in Flachau in Austria. And um, if you look to access control with Azure Science Analytics, it's an often a forgotten piece where you can define, uh, where you cannot define roles, for example, in Azure Data Factory. Uh, you can do this with Azure Synapse. And you should always ask yourself why someone should have a certain admin role. Why should someone have an administrator role? With the arrival of this new, more uh, refined model with Azure Sign Analytics, it's, it's time to pay more attention to it as of today. Uh, Azure Sign Analytics provides a more uh, provides a comprehensive and fine-grained access model, uh, and that integrates the Azure roles for more the resource management, access to data stores, to create workspaces. Of course, the signups roles uh, to access the workspace, uh, to access code or to execute code. The SQL roles to access the data uh, in, for example, the SQL pools uh, uh, like serverless and the dedicated SQL pool, but also the Azure SQL databases. The Git permissions to access the source control, in con uh, including continuous uh, uh, integration and continuous deployment uh, support. Uh, Access control can be simplified by using security groups that are aligned with people's uh, job roles, like data scientists, data analysts, data engineers. You only need to add and remove users from the appropriate uh, security group uh, to manage that access, which I will explain to you a little bit later. So let's start to have a look into the required Azure roles. Uh, the final goal of today's session is to have a signups workspace uh, with access control for development and production. Uh, connected with Azure DevOps and the user security groups. In this session, I assume that every non, everyone knows what Azure Synapse Analytics is and uh, what it can what can what it can do. Uh, if you look to Synapse Analytics, uh, the first step we need to do is we have to look into our resource management. So we have an empty shell uh, which we need to deploy. Before we can deploy. Uh, to, or to create a signups workspace, you need to be an owner or contributor on the resource group. Once you have deployed the signups workspace, uh, uh, the owner or contributor rights on the signups workspace is enough to manage the workspace. But remember, if you want to use automatic deployment, for example, uh, ARM templates or DevOps deployments, you need to be at least an Azure contributor on the resource group. So not on the workspace, but on the resource group. What kind of resource management do we have more? We have also access management, so the Azure Storage Block Data Contributor. That role will enable the serverless SQL pools and the Apache Spark tables uh, that, so that they can store their data into that blob store or, or in that data lake or to install the Apache Spark libraries in the Synapse workspace or in the associated data lake uh, Synapse workspace. So you need to have that Blob Data Contributor assigned. And if you create a signups workspace, this uh, assignment is normally directly done during the uh, creation process, which you can see uh, left under uh, on my screen. If you only want to give users limited rights, you can give them the Azure yes role, reader role. This can be done on the signups workspace or on the resource group. If you do that on the resource group, they will all see the, uh, they will all see also see all the, the other resources in the resource group, and otherwise only the workspace. When reader rights user uh, with, with the reader rights, the user can log in from directly from the portal. If you don't have reader rights in the uh, in the Azure portal, then you have to log in directly directly into the signups workspace, which I will explain you in a bit. So within Synapse Analytics, we have actually three administrators: well, the Synapse administrator, the Apache Spark administrator, and the SQL administrator. And this was more like a joke, the Synapse Data Explorer Administrator, because you will see in the next couple of slides that we have the Data Explorer currently in preview, but there is no 
uh, admin role defined for that, and you cannot create any work item types for that one as well. So maybe that's a role which, which will come in the future when the, pro when the product data explorer in Synapse Analytics will be uh, in a GA status. So looking to these roles, um, what I already explained, we have the Synapse Administrator, and now we are going to look more into what kind of control access they have based on the on the different uh, analytical runtimes in the in the system. The Synapse Administrator has a full access to the serverless SQL pool, the Data Explorer pool, the Apache Spark pool, and the integration runtimes. So even if you are not uh, uh, an, a Synapse Administrator, but you are owner or contributor on the workspace, you can also do this uh, uh, actions over here. The Synapse SQL Administrator has only rights to the serverless SQL pools, and of course, the Apache Spark has only access to the uh, uh, Spark pools. So the one is missing, and that's the dedicated SQL pool. That's assigned by, by the SQL Active Directory admin. So the, the SQL Active Directory admin has full access to the dedicated SQL pools. What else can these roles do? So now we have more control management, and the second step is the sign administrator. The administrator, the sign administrator is more like the gut mouth. It can read and write act artifacts, and it has full access to all these pools that I just explained to you before. It can create, read, updates, and delete uh, access to all the published code artifacts. So artifacts are pipelines, data sets, uh, data flows, uh, notebooks, etc., etc., etc. It can manage all the actions on Spark, can execute pipelines, and in addition to the signups administrator, Azure owners can also assign the signup RBAC roles. Uh, Azure permissions are required to de create, delete, and manage compute resources. The second one, Apache Spark can do all, all activities on these Spark artifacts. So it can read, uh, create, read, update, and delete everything on published uh, job def uh, Spark job definitions, notebooks, and their outputs. Um, very important, it can read all other artifacts, but so not published or edit, but can, it can read. And it cannot, uh, uh, it doesn't include any granting access uh, on, on the lower level uh, uh, roles. And that's almost the same for the SQL administrator, only the SQL administrator is more focused, or is not more, is focused uh, on the uh, published SQL scripts, the credentials, and the linked services. And it can also not uh, uh, granting this, this access. And by default, if you are signed up as SQL administrator, you can. Uh, you will get uh, the SQL uh, database reader, writer, connect, and grant permissions by, by default on every uh, serverless database uh, which is created. The next one uh, are the non administrator roles. So we have contributors, we have uh, artifact publishers, the users, compute operators, uh, credential users, link data managers, and users. So there are a lot of roles uh, in there. And if you look to the to the Synapse workspace on the right side, we are talking about the middle layer, the workspace layer. If you look to that, uh, all these different roles, uh, I have created uh, some uh, activities, some ski activities, and uh, uh, yes, uh, maybe it is not the the the, the overview. Uh, I'm going to explain in detail. It's more an overview which kind of activity belongs to which role, and as you can see. Uh, to create, for example, the managed finets, the only the linked data manager is the is, has that uh, has the, the access to create these managed finets. Of course, besides the administrator role. And uh, besides the administrator role, you will see that the contributor has almost uh, uh, yeah, how, how do you say that uh, almost all the rights to do everything, and then the artifact publisher or the artifact uh, user. What have I explained to you a little bit before? We had the workspace, and we can even uh, uh, do some more fine grading as well. So on the workspace items, um, with the workspace items, uh, you can uh, even uh, get a more, yeah, more sc uh, scoped, uh, uh, more scoped uh, access control on linked services, Apache Spark pools, integration runtimes, and credentials. So that means that I can say, okay, this person has only access to that Spark pool, or this group of data scientists, scientists has only access to this Spark pool, or this group of data engineers has only access to that uh, integration runtime. Uh, and in the next demo, which will come up in a bit, I will show you how that will work and what you can do uh, with that. 
So I have now explained a little bit the roles, uh, the, the roles we have in, in Synapse. The next step is how do we assign these roles within our uh, Synapse analytical environment? So what I already explained, the role assignment can be done on the workspace or on the workspace item. So on the right side, you will see all the different roles. If you are the owner or contributor on the uh, Synapse workspace or if you are a Synapse administrator. Um, this Synapse administrator can also be a guest user. So uh, I can add uh, uh, Richard or uh, Victoria to my tenant as a Synapse administrator and she can assign roles on my uh, tenant. If there is no Synapse administrator uh, assigned, what I just explained, you need to be the owner to assign that. And uh, if you want to assign a workspace item, you have to click on the right, uh, the workspace item button, and then you can select these four categories. And for example, if you select on the Apache Spark tool, you can select uh, the item, and that item is the, the created Spark tools within uh, the system. And then you can say, okay, you are the administrator on that Spark pool, or you are a contributor or the compute operator. My advice is to, is to create roles also, uh, always assigned based on security groups. And if you do a, a change in these assignments, so if you add a new role, or not, not adding a new role, but if you assign people to a role, it will take up to two to five minutes before it will be active. And if you do changes in, in your security group, it can take up 10 to 50 minutes. So that means you add or remove a user within your security group, and then it will be synced to your Synapse workspace, and that in between it will take to 10 to 50 minutes. I haven't seen 50 minutes before. Uh, it's more like uh, the two or three minutes uh, uh, normally, but it also depends on how large your Active Directory is. Um, so before we go into demo, I would first want to give you some, uh, some tips. Because if you log in and uh, you will get a message that you don't have access to the Azure portal, uh, so like you do not have any Azure subscriptions in this, uh, this is currently my uh, directory, uh, click here to switch to another directory. That means that you don't have any reader access with, uh, on that subscription level. So there is no reader role assigned to any resource there. Uh, the only way that you can log into Synapse Analytics there is if you know that you can log in is go directly uh, to web azuresignups.net, like the same thing you can do with Azure Databricks, for example. And then uh, there's something else that you need to do. On the moment you will see your workspace, you will have two options from Azure subscription. That's the normal way you can connect to your workspace. But you can also enter manually. If you select enter manually, you can directly fill in the workspace name. So there's no drop down list to select. No, you have to fill in, in it manually. We have a zip. So the next one, Power BI. Power BI, uh, you will get kind of these kind of uh, error message, so a uh, red cross or request field, the status field. Access for Power BI is defined on the Power BI workspace level. So nothing in the sign-ups and analytical environment. So you have to go to Power BI and there have to, you have to assign the security groups or the uh, users to a, a certain a workspace. When you are starting to work with this more fine grade model uh, with Synapse Analytics, you will definitely get in the future some error messages. So no access, required permissions are like workspace uh, uh, pipeline uh, or uh, uh, a few outputs actions, but, but you can see on the on the top corner over here. Or you will, when you want to publish, you will get errors that you are not, uh, that you do not have the required signups or back permissions to do that. Um, there's a whole list per uh, role defined what kind of actions uh, they are allowed to do. Um, that list can be found on the on the Microsoft uh, Docs site. And what I've done, I have created an overview just for myself as well, but also as, as of today for you as well. Uh, by so I have all the actions written down by role so that you directly can see which uh, role action uh, a job or a, a user can can do. So for example, if you look to the, if, if we go back to the previous side, uh, slide, we saw that we didn't have any right uh, actions on the trigger. And now you will see that you have to at least to be an artifact publisher, contributor or administrator role to write or create a new trigger or to remove uh, uh, one of the triggers. I would say it is 
for me, it was a pretty, uh, really handy overview uh, to see uh, which uh, role action was missing for which group uh, or which uh, uh, for which user. So uh, let's do some toboggan. And uh, uh, let's dive into a demo in the first demo to uh, walk you a little bit through how everything is working. So, <coughs> how everything is working. So, what we can do, uh, first of all, what I already said before, I assume that you have the uh, correct uh, knowledge about signups, how to create these workspaces. And during the creation of a new workspace, um, you will see that you can assign a, a, a blob storage uh, pretty easy. So I can click on create. I'm not going to create a workspace, oh. but here you will see directly that you can assign the data lake storage and that the uh, storage, uh, storage blob data contributor rights are directly assigned. If you want to check that uh, uh, on your uh, uh, data lake, you can go to your data lake, say, okay, access control, check access for my workspace, which I can demo to you, and you will see that I have the stored block data contributor rights for that uh, resources, which is automatically added. So based on that service principle. Going back to the first part. Within the portal, uh, because in this case, I am the owner of the subscription and uh, also owner on the resource group. You will see that I can create a new SQL pool over here. Pretty easy uh, that I can create a new Apache Spark pool and also the uh, uh, Data Explorer uh, pool. The same what I just explained to you in one of these slides. If you then open the uh, workspace, So my workspace is opened and uh, the access control you can find in the Manage Activity Hub. So uh, almost everything is done over there. So if you click on access control, you will see uh, that in, in this case I have uh, a signups administrator. So this is my uh, workspace. Uh, this is my group of administrators for my development environment because this is my development environment. And I've also added my uh, service principle for my uh, DevOps uh, deployments. So I can do some automatically deployments uh, with that uh, user. And I will explain you uh, later on why this is a signage administrator. So if I want to add new access control, I can select a role over here and I can choose between all the roles I just explained to you from user to administrator and then I can start searching in here if I want to add, for example, a security group or if I want to add. A, a user, so this is my Gmail account. If I want to have that more fine grained uh, access control, I need to go to workspace item. I can select, uh, for example, the uh, a linked service. I can say. OK, you have admin rights on uh, your data lake storage or you have admin rights on your key vault. So that means that you can change that link service uh, and uh, that you can uh, do uh, uh, and publish this uh, to, to, the, to, the, to, to the workspace. But also you can say, OK, like, listen, I have an Apache Spark pool. I want that you ha have only access to the Spark pool. And if you are in there, you can say, OK, you have full control or you can contribute or you can only scale and scale up the uh, compute uh, uh, part. And the same in here, what I just uh, explained to you within the portal, I can also create a new uh, 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 pool over here. Uh, I can create the new uh, Apache Spark pool as well. And I can uh, show you the uh, uh, how to create that new uh, data explorer view. What I also explained to you was that if I do not have access to a certain workspace, I can directly log in to web.azuresignups.net. And in this case, you will see if I look to the Synapse Analytical Workspace, I have only access to my development uh, part through the Azure portal, but I do want to connect uh, to my production environment because that's one of the workspaces as well. So I select the workspace, I will select the correct uh, Active Directory, and in, 
and you will see I can only choose the, uh, the development workspace uh, because that's the only one I can see from my subscription. But if I click on the enter manually, I can add the workspace name. So in this case, production, I can click on continue and I can access uh, this, the, the, the workspace over here uh, pretty easy uh, and I can have the, the rights which are assigned through the access control uh, 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 I can do in here, but uh, that this will be a part of that I will explain a little bit later, but you will see again here that I do not have access to grain to give other people access to the uh, to the system. So switching back to the presentation again. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is the, the, the SQL pools. So the SQL roles. Uh, a serverless SQL pool is an auto compute environment which we can uh, which we can utilize the T-SQL capabilities to query our data lake uh, directly by Delta, by Parquet or CSV or JSON. It's really an awesome functionality and uh, I'm sure that there will be one session today as well on, on serverless SQL pools. And uh, the second one is the dedicated SQL pool. <coughs> Sorry for that. And a dedicated SQL pool is a powerful MPP, so massive parallel processing system, which has a distributed query engine that's more for big uh, data, uh, big data workloads or data where uh, data warehousing workloads. If you want to access this uh, serverless SQL pool, um, if you are the sign up administrator, you will directly get the DB owner roles on the built in serverless SQL pool. So as a sign up administrator, you can do everything on these uh, SQL pools. If you look uh, to the sign of SQL administrator, it can do all the actions on the SQL scripts and it has by default what, already, uh, what you already saw before. It can connect to the SQL server endpoints with SQL data with reader, writer, connect and grant uh, permissions. The second pool is the dedicated SQL pool. Uh, and in this case, the sign of administrator is not gotten out. Because the sign-up administrator has full access to data in the dedicated SQL pools, it can grant you other users uh, access, it can do all the, the configuration and maintenance activities, but it cannot drop any SQL pool. The sign-up SQL administrator, maybe uh, you have seen it already in one of the first slides, has no access by default. So we have to add that sign-up SQL administrator, we have to add that role uh, with some uh, uh, with some other uh, functionality add to, to the to the serverless pool to the dedicated SQL pool, but in this case, everybody which uh, which belongs to the Active Directory admin group has full access. To add these users to the SQL pools to the serverless SQL pools, you have to create a login, and then you have to add uh, your user to your desired database. Yes, and there are also some some tricks to. Uh, add the uh, a user group to all the serverless uh, databases and for a dedicated SQL pool we have to create a user and then we have to execute the SP at role member uh, to add that user in there. Uh, normally I think uh, a data reader or data, uh, data writer can work fine for all the read write permissions uh, uh, as long as you're, you do not have to, to use the DB owner rights. Be, uh, be careful for a Spark user to read and write directly from Spark into or from a SQL pool, the DB owner permissions are required. So uh, if you want to have your, uh, your data scientist wants to write data directly in your pool, uh, in your dedicated SQL pool, then you have to assign the DB owner uh, uh, permissions to there. Uh, so let's have a look into how to create these users uh, on the database and, and, and how, what kind of access we have. I'm just going to switch screens again. Let's start with my uh, uh, main uh, workspace. So in this case, I want to execute a, a, a SQL script. A SQL script and I have prepared some SQL scripts as well. So I do not have any demo uh, database as you can see over here. Uh, what I will do, I will create two databases. Uh, 
I think my server that anyone needs to start up. Then I will create uh, uh, a, a login for my uh, Gmail account. So that's where it's going to be my uh, test account. Then I will assign that user. So I will I will create a new user based on that uh, login in my demo database. And I will assign the owner roles uh, just to show you how everything works. Just the easiest one. And the next thing is I will create two views. I will create a view uh, based on my uh, Delta Lake uh, within the uh, demo database. And I will do the same. This is ready in my demo, not a, a no view uh, a database. And what I want to show you is that I have uh, later on with my Gmail account, I have access to the demo, uh, uh, the, the view in the demo database, and I have no access to the uh, other view. The same thing is if I want to create users uh, for my dedicated uh, uh, SQL pool, it's a little bit different approach as you can see over here. I have to create that user. I just can cl uh, click on uh, create user and this can also be a security group. So that doesn't mean uh, uh, that I have to add user by user. Uh, it's already there. Uh, uh, but and the from external provider, what you can see over here, that means that you are uh, acting or adding users from an extra Azure Active Directory. And you can also add uh, these roles as well, but probably it's already in there. And if I want to give full access to all the databases for my account, I just can click create login with my account again, and then alter server role, sysadmin, add member. And now I will have access to all these different uh, uh, databases directly uh, within my serverless engine. So my serverless pool, so not dedicated. So if I switch to my uh, Gmail account, this is my uh, Gmail account. And I'm logging into my uh, development workspace. Where I just assigned these uh, rights. So I'm going to my data tab, so my data management tab where I can find my SQL databases. And you will see that I have that demo database over here that I can see it. I can click on view and I can hopefully execute that view as well. So this is working. So I have created that same view on the demo no view uh, database. And if I go to there, I will get an error that there is no, cannot open database demo no view requested by login, login field for user. So I do not have access on that table. I do have access on this external table, which I have created as well within my uh, dedicated SQL uh, pool. As you can see, because, uh, I've added these rights as well on that database. As you can see, I can run it over there. So you can define security roles per database uh, 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 on your um, uh, serverless databases. If you are the uh, Synapse SQL administrator, you will get these rights by default on every database which is created over there. That was, was the SQL part. Uh, now we have the next part. Um, and we're going to talk about a little bit about, uh, about Azure DevOps. For a Git integration with Azure DevOps, uh, the user must have the basic user settings within DevOps. And to create a DevOps connection, the user must have least the Azure contributor rights on the Synapse workspace as well. If you do not, or, and that's mostly for development. Uh, if you going back to the to the Synapse workspace, you have that publish button. If you are in development uh, in, in your development branch and you want to click on publish, then you need to have at least the contributor rights. If you don't have that, you will get the error, which you will see uh, on the top right that you don't uh, can write over the scope. Uh, to publish code to the Synapse, uh, to this uh, to publish the code, the Synapse Arbor role artifact publisher will be enough to that to do that. And uh, if you look to the service connection, um, you need to have the uh, Azure contributor or higher role on the resource group. Um, and 
so that you can also deploy uh, SQL pools or Spark pools from your DevOps to your Synapse workspace. And in Azure Synapse Analytics, the minimum rights you need to have is the artifact publisher. But in a situation you want to deploy uh, these access rules as well through DevOps, then you need to be the Synapse administrator because otherwise I cannot uh, uh, define any rules. And the service connection can always also be used uh, to deploy code to test acceptance and uh, production as well. So, um, what I've explained, I think we we talked about the the, the two different works the, the workspaces, the workspace items, all the analytical runtime, the access to the data lake stores, the access to the uh, resource group or to the Synapse workspace and how you can access the production workspace as well without having any reader roles within uh, that production environment. The next step is that we need to create uh, uh, two security groups for data engineers and data scientists. The data engineer, uh, we want to have access to, uh, we want to grant them access to this, uh, full access to the SQL serverless. Uh, we want that the data engineers can publish or edit code but not publish code in production. It should have uh, the rights to debug, uh, to the debug uh, pipelines. And the data scientist is more focused on the, on the Spark side, uh, but need access to the serverless database as well to query data. Uh, uh, it needs access to a specified Spark pool. And also it sh should publish code and uh, submit uh, some jobs. So this is going to be my last demo. And then uh, let's see uh, how far we can run and what, what else what's happening with all these different roles. So before we continue, I'm going back to my uh, main, uh, to my owner part, and I'm going to manage. What I already have done, prepared a little bit, I have created already some access for, the, for these uh, users. So what I've done, I have created two different security groups, one for data scientists and one for data engineers. They need to publish code, so that they need to be the artifact publisher. Then we have the Synapse computer operator. I told you, if you go back to the slides, needs access to a specified Spark pool. I can have at the compute operator, select the compute operator role, and only on that Spark pool. If I show you that again, Spark pool, I have the choice between two uh, different Spark pools but I only granted access to the Spark uh, uh, 30 uh, or 3.0 pool. And then the data engineer should execute pipelines and then to execute pipelines, you need to be the credential users. The one who is missing is the SQL administrator because I also said we need to have full access to um, the serverless SQL pools. So what I can do, I can select the role over here, the SQL administrator, then I can uh, select the security group. I will add the data scientist and uh, I will add the uh, data engineer as well. Then I will click on apply. So these roles are now assigned. So the next thing what I will do is I will uh, log in with another account and this is going to be the purple account. So this is going to be a data scientist. So purple is data scientist, blue is data engineer uh, between the different screens. I will log in. And by the way, this is the part where you can assign that Active Directory admin role to a group of users to, so that you can uh, add or remove uh, the uh, uh, dedicated SQL pools. I will log in. And I can go to manage, access control. I will see uh, the different uh, roles because uh, uh, I'm an artifact publisher, so I can read everything. And if I go to, for example, my notebooks, You will see you do not have required RBAC permissions to use the Spark 31 uh, uh, 3.1 uh, pool. Contact your Synapse administrator. But what I did, I did give them the access rights to use that other pool. So I can use this pool, and I cannot, I cannot, so I can start running it, and it will probably run. 
uh, but I cannot uh, use the other pool. I can create uh, uh, some new code over here. And if I go to the pipelines, and I want to add a new pipeline, oh, I cannot debug or trigger that pipeline because the reason in here is I said only the data engineers can debug or add uh, or start triggering a pipeline. And uh, the credential user role is not assigned to the data scientist. So if I go to my Gmail account, so that's the blue one, I will go to develop and uh, I will go to a notebook. You will see I cannot select either one of these uh, pools, but if I go to the uh, to the pipeline part, I can add a new pipeline over here and even can debug that pipeline. I can clone that pipeline and I can uh, commit that pipeline because I have access to uh, to the uh, and I can also if everything is work, uh, working well, I can publish that pipeline. As you can see, I can publish uh, probably it will go wrong somewhere at, uh, because I have some SQL scripts running over there. Oh, it's working fine. Also here, you will see the SQL pools, the Apache Spark pools. You will see everything, but you don't have rights to to do uh, uh, things on that uh, on that uh, uh, on that Spark pool. If I go to production and I want to, uh, for example, uh, go to pipelines, and I'm, for example, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm cloning this pipeline. I say publish. You will see that I do not have the rights to publish these uh, uh, you, uh, the, these artifacts because of the reason that I have my access control. I don't have access to that, but I do not have the publish rights. I have only the rights to uh, as an artifact user, so I can use all, everything, but I cannot publish it to um, uh, to the to the system. So going back. Just as a recap, uh, if you want to access the Azure Sign Up Studio, uh, you need to be uh, at least a reader role to access in there. Uh, and if uh, if you want to access it to the portal, and if you want to access it directly to the Sign Up workspace, uh, you need to have at least read the uh, Sign Up user rights at, uh, in the in the Sign Up Studio, so then that you can read everything. To create SQL pools, Spark pools, Data Explorer pools, uh, you need to be the uh, 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 sign up administrator role to execute notebooks. You need to be the con compute operator or uh, contributor uh, to view and edit code artifacts. The artifact user will be enough to debug uh, to debug or trigger pipelines. The sign up's credential user needs to be there to monitor. Uh, uh, you need to be the uh, administrator, contributor or publisher and to publish code. That's as well. You need to be uh, a publisher. So I think uh, hopefully it was a great session. If there are some questions left, I'm happy to hear them. Uh, you can ask these questions to the Slack channel or um, uh, ask them through Twitter or LinkedIn. And at the end of the day, I will uh, upload my slides uh, to my blog, uh, erwindeklug.com. And this was my session for today. And I hope, hopefully you will have a great day today on Sinus Analytics. Let's data top again.